on my Josh Yaks YouTube page here, I have a playlist called Tattoo Talk, where I've been very slowly doing a series where I go step by step through the process of getting a tattoo in depth from the initial inspiration to the final aftercare. I've only done a couple of videos so far, but I've started getting a new tattoo, so I figured I'd do a video taking you through the entire process from a visual standpoint here. Although I'm an avid fan of the art of tattooing, it's been six or seven years, maybe even longer, since I could afford to even think about getting a tattoo. However, a while back, a friend of mine found a tattoo apprentice in Toronto and volunteered his skin to practice on, and he started getting one tattoo after the other from this apprentice, and that got me thinking that maybe I could find an apprentice who would give me tattoos that I could actually afford. I'm not somebody who's particularly picky about perfection when it comes to tattooing, which maybe doesn't sound like the smartest approach, seeing as it is permanently on your skin for the rest of your life, but it's tattooing, right? There's this kind of punk rock history and aesthetic where perfection isn't necessarily the top priority for everybody. So anyhow, I started asking around at local shops and I did find a shop in the area that had an apprentice who had just started. And they said, come back in a couple of months, maybe by then they'll be ready to do some tattooing. So I waited two or three months, came back again, and they said, no, they're not ready to start tattooing yet. And at that point I started getting kind of cold feet about that particular apprentice and thought, mm, maybe I should look around a bit more. And so I did, I asked at another shop and sure enough, they had an apprentice there who was looking to do some work. So I thought, perfect, I'll give it a shot. I had this design that I found online of somebody else's tattoo, which looks like this. And while I would never dream of copying somebody else's tattoo, I really liked the overall design of it and wanted to use that as the inspiration for my own piece. So I ended up taking in this picture to the tattoo apprentice and I said that I wanted a reading and writing related tattoo tattoo that incorporated a pile of books with a skull on top and the candle and the quill. I didn't want the paint brushes or the bugs necessarily, although I didn't mind the spider web on there. But I also made it clear that I didn't want to copy this design, that I wanted the artist himself to create a piece for me. So he took my design and told me to come back the following week for our first session. And he called me up the night before and said, oh, I need a bit more time to work on your design. I said, take all the time you need. Let's not rush the process. And so I ended up coming back the following week where he showed me what he had drawn up and I really liked it. He incorporated the stack of books here and the skull on top with the candle on top of that. And around the side we have the ink pot and the quill. The only kind of issues I had were the fact that it didn't cover my entire forearm and the fact that he hadn't incorporated any of these spider webs off of it. But we both sort of figured that that space could be filled in at a later date if I wanted to do something where I basically filled out the rest of my arm here. And what was key for me was that he was only asking $200 for that entire piece, which by way of comparison, the one on my upper arm here costed me fifteen hundred and fifty dollars and this was done over two sittings I did a nine hour sitting and then a ten hour sitting to complete this piece but the, the difference between fifteen hundred dollars for that one and two hundred dollars for this one I thought I just can't go wrong there even if it's not executed perfectly I thought I was pretty happy with what I was seeing up to that point. So we sat down and we did our first sitting a few weeks back. It ended up being a six hour session and he completed all of the line work as well as the shading for kind of the central portion of it. After the healing process, which I will take you through after my second session, I took a couple of photos of it and emailed them to the artist to show him the healed tattoo. And he said it was looking good. We were ready for our second session. So I've booked my second sitting, which is gonna happen in a few days. After I do that one, I will 
continue this video and walk you through the aftercare and the healing process, hopefully to the finished tattoo when it's all said and done. Now I will mention too that the $200 is an amazing price of course but i also want to be generous with the artist you know he's trying to learn his craft and support his family and that sort of thing so i made sure to tip very well because of the fact that i was getting this cheap tattoo and i was happy with the work that he was doing so yeah although the listed price was 200 at the end of it all it's gonna cost me a bit more but you know, again, that's not a bad price at all for a tattoo. And that's where I'll leave off for the moment. This video will continue after I have my second sitting completed. Oh, hold on. I almost forgot. You are looking at the design going, yeah, it's a nice design and everything, but what does it all mean? Well, of course, the books and the quill represent two of my very favorite things in life, which are reading and writing. The candle obviously stands for the fact that reading and learning are what illuminates the truth, so to speak. The skull here is for the fact that Although our lives are short, what lives on beyond us are the things we create, the things we bring into the world that are creative and beautiful, such as writing or other art forms. And I mean, skulls are just cool, right? <laughs> Yeah, the aesthetic of it is all pretty neat too, of course. That's an important part of the whole thing besides the meaning behind it. So yes, we'll leave it off there and I'll be back shortly. It's been about a month since my last tattoo session and I was scheduled for my second one today. However, I woke up at 3 a.m. last night with the worst nausea. So from about 3 until 6 o'clock this morning, I was just feeling so incredibly ill and I wasn't sure if it was food poisoning or a stomach bug or the Crohn's disease. So I ended up at about 6 a.m. texting my tattoo apprentice and saying, listen, I've been up sick all night and unfortunately I'm going to have to reschedule, but because of the inconvenience of canceling at the last minute, you can definitely up the cost of the tattoo and I'll give you some extra money next time. And eventually I got back to sleep for a few hours, woke up a few hours later and noticed that the apprentice had texted me back and said, if you're feeling up for it, you can just come in later. That's no problem, which I thought was really nice. So I ended up going in for my tattoo session. And one small detail I forgot about the first session was that even before the first session, when I was initially dropping off my design idea and having a chat with the artist about whether he wanted to do that tattoo, I did end up leaving a $50 deposit. That's kind of a standard part of the process. Basically, if the artist comes back and I just happen to really hate the design, decide to walk away from it, go to a different artist, they will still keep that deposit, which is only fair given the fact that they have spent a lot of time drawing this unique piece of artwork, and even if I don't like it, it's still time that they have taken and spent and needs to be compensated. So fortunately, as you know, I did quite enjoy the design, so the $50 actually comes out of the total cost of the tattoo, so it's not lost money or anything like that. But that was just a little detail I forgot to mention the first time around. So with this session, one thing I was a little concerned about was the first session we had when the artist got to the line work on the back of the arm. He had me sitting in an office chair because, again, he's an apprentice. He doesn't have all the gear that all the other permanent artists have. So basically I was sitting in an office chair. He had his little work table where I had my arm resting on top for him to work. But when he had to get the back of my arm, basically I had to turn around and twist my arm back so that I could remain on his work table while he did his thing. And I was finding that just the process of having my arm behind my back was totally cutting off the circulation to my hand. So this time around, I did mention the fact that I was hoping to get more comfortable when he got to that part of the arm again. And he was able to actually bring in a proper tattooing chair slash table convertible thingy so that I could sit in it for the part of the arm that was kind of more in front and then when it came to that back part of the arm I basically lay flat on my stomach and had my arm lying out sideways 
just next to me here for him to work on the back and that was much more comfortable i didn't find i had the same problem with losing circulation to my fingers and and my hand the other thing i did different for this appointment was i actually remembered to shave my arm last night before coming in even if you're getting tattooed on a part of the body that seemingly has no hair you're still gonna have to have that area shaved to get all those fine little hairs you might not notice at first glance before the tattooing can be done and unless you want to be dry shaved with a cheap disposable razor on the same area that is about to have the needles going on it it's a good idea to the night before your tattoo appointment to give yourself a good shave in the area that's being tattooed so I'd forgotten that it's been quite a long time like I said since I had a tattoo so with the last appointment I had to have the old dry shave and but this time around I remembered to get that done so that the artist could get to work right away and I didn't have to worry about that stupid razor and overall it was a really good appointment I asked the artist if he would feel it rude if I were to put some headphones in and listen to podcasts and he said he didn't mind so I just basically sat there and listened to podcasts and it only took him about three hours to finish up the rest of the work that needed to be done and then he wrapped it all up so I have to keep this wrapping on overnight and then tomorrow when I remove it I will show you the removal and the next steps I do for the aftercare so the next couple of weeks are going going to be basically taking care of the tattoo so that it heals nicely and I don't wind up with any complications or anything of that sort. So I'll leave it to hopefully get a good night's sleep tonight and tomorrow I'll turn this back on to show you the first part of the aftercare. I can't wait to get this thing off and have a shower. It's kind of sore and itchy and it's going to feel quite nice. So now that it's the following morning, what I have to do is get the wrappings off of here and then get into the shower and give it a wash with some regular soap. And all I'll be really doing for the next two days is twice a day giving it a wash with soap and water nothing else. Uh, basically this is an open wound that needs to heal now. So where is the end of this thing? Yeah so like I said for the next two days all I'm doing is is washing it twice a day and I'm gonna get some scissors. But one key part of that is when I dry it afterwards, I'm just going to be very gently patting it dry with paper towels and not rubbing it with a regular towel. I don't want to be getting any towel material into any open wounds or just giving doing anything abrasive to it. So what they put on here is kind of some non-stick dressings wrapped up by this stuff just to hold the dressings in place. In the past, before I guess I was given proper instructions, uh, what would happen is I would go home, I would put on a t-shirt because I knew that it was going to continue to bleed. I'd go to bed, I'd wake up in the morning and my t-shirt would be stuck to my tattoo and I'd have to peel it off and then I'd have this permanent colorful blood stain on my t-shirt and plus it wasn't good for the healing of the tattoo to try to be pulling a t-shirt off of the freshly done tattoo so now at least I have these non-stick dressings that are very smooth on the inside so that the dried blood doesn't cause them to adhere to the wound and I just have to take all these off. Oh, it already feels nice to expose it to the open air. And last one. So, yeah, you can see it kind of picks up some of that kind of blood and ink. And there we have the tattoo that needs to be washed up now. The new areas are gonna look very dark until they heal and the scabs come off and then you'll see kind of the proper look of the tattoo I guess so this is what it looks like pre-shower I'll go have a shower and feel much better in a few minutes 
and this is post shower it doesn't feel nearly as refreshed as I was hoping it would it still feels very sore and itchy and that itchiness is only going to get worse over the next week plus like I said it is darker than the finished product will be but I do wonder if my apprentice tattooer went a little heavy on the blacks in the ink pot and the book spines and the quill and sort of blended it all together in a big inky mess but you know we'll wait a couple weeks and once it's all healed up and lightened up We'll see how it looks. For now, I just want to keep it nice and clean and dry in between cleanings. And then in a couple of days, I'll come back with the next step of the aftercare process. And by the way, this little red highlighting on the candle is intentional. So it's all black and gray, except for the top of the candle there. And I will be back again in a couple of days. The moment I've been waiting for for two and a half days has finally arrived. I've just gotten out of the shower again. I'm now gently towel drying and I have my bottle of moisturizer cooling on the windowsill. This is a fragrance free moisturizer. That's your best bet when you're dealing with a essentially a wound like a healing tattoo. And I'm going to go ahead and take a generous amount of the moisturizing cream and just, oh, it feels nice. Just rub it right in to that tattoo. So the goal with the first couple of days there was to keep it very clean and dry as it was all scabbing over. And now that that's all happened, the goal will be to keep it nicely mo moisturized, to put this on probably two or three times a day in order for those scabs to stay on as long as possible and naturally come off over the next week, week and a half, maybe even two two weeks in some cases but what we don't want is to let it get all dried out and flaky and start catching on things and ripping off you definitely don't want to be scratching it even though this one in particular has been so itchy right from the get-go typically it's a few days of healing before the itchiness starts to come into play but you don't want to be scratching it off because if you're tearing off pieces of the scab, those areas are not going to heal into your skin as well. And so you just want to keep it moisturized and like I said, let it come off naturally. There are post tattoo creams, moisturizing creams out there that you can get, but all you really need is a nice fragrance free maybe one for sensitive skin even, one that's gonna be just really easy on your skin and on the areas that are healing up. So I'll probably come back in a handful of days, maybe once the first scabs start to come off, just for an update, and then once more at the very end to show you the finished healed up tattoo. And just to be able to rub it now feels so good because it is itchy, itchy, anyways. I'll see you again in a couple of days. Happy birthday to me. That's right, the day I am recording this, it is my birthday as I move rapidly onwards towards my mid 40s. The actual number doesn't bother me. I just don't want to put all my personal identifying information out into the internet, but I don't know when I'm going to actually have this edited and posted, but for now, I'm another year older. So I didn't end up doing a midpoint video for the healing of the tattoo in terms of the scab stuff. Figured you didn't really need images of peeling scabs. Plus the actual healing for the second half of the tattoo, it didn't end up scabbing nearly as much as, for instance, the really dark eyes of the skull here. So it was just kind of lightly flaking off as it healed. And now the full tattoo is healed up. Overall, I'm really pleased with how the tattoo turned out. I went into it not knowing where in the apprenticeship my artist was, and I actually still don't know where he is in his training. So I was basically going into this thinking, all right, with the financial situation I have right now, if I want a tattoo, I'm gonna have to accept the fact that I might end up with a really terrible tattoo. And I went in there with that expectation, but I'm really quite happy with the result. The other thing is the artist that did it for me, the apprentice, 
this. As far as I know, has no experience doing black and gray tattoos. When I looked at the few photos he has of the tattoos he's done, all of them are in the traditional American style with the very clean solid lines and the sort of blocky primary colors and that sort of thing. So I think this was a total departure from what he was used to doing. And certainly after he had done the line work and started into the shading, he was asking a number of questions of the artist under whom he was apprenticing, which is great. Certainly better to ask a lot of questions than to pretend you know what you're doing. So I know that with experience, he will get better at the black and gray, that he won't end up with really big blotches of black and really big areas of white and he will have a more fine-tuned gray scale and that sort of thing. But if anything, I'm glad he went really dark with the blacks because the tattoo is going to hold up very well over time if I take care of it and keep using sun protection. So yeah, I think this is going to hold up really well and I am very much looking forward to coming back to this apprentice with my next idea. If you didn't find any of this to be helpful, I hope you at least found it interesting and let me know what tattoo you would get if you could go out and get one right now. I'm just fascinated by this art form and love talking about it, so please comment below and feel free to also tell me about tattoos you already have. The preceding video has been brought to you free of charge by me, Josh. The only thing I ask in return is that you could do one of the following. Give me a thumb up, push the subscribe button, or share the link to this video with somebody who you think would enjoy it. Cheers! On my Josh Yaks tattoo. Josh Yaks tattoo. Just what we need is for me to start tattooing people. On my Josh, Josh Yaks. My Josh Yaks. The most desirable aspect of it. I. He incorporated the stack of books. He incorporated these. How do I? I am. That's still money that they've earned just from uh, spending the. Overall, I'm super pleased with how the whole tattoo ended up turning out.